Welcome back. We're discussing trans athletes in sports, specifically women's sports, because that's where it seems that a lot of trans athletes end up. Uh, and joining me again is coach Dr. Linda Blade. Coach Blade, you know, through the last number of years, we have seen governments kind of shift one way to adopt a very open pro-trans athletes and women's sports kind of policy or policy of, of non-interference where let's just let's see what happens and, and see where things lie. However, now it seems like the pendulum has swung a different way and it's going back to where some would suggest, probably myself as well, as a common sense position where people are saying, well, hold on now. We see there are harms to women's sports. Uh, let's put the brakes on this. And we'll get into some of those those policies recently. But what has precipitated this sea change in policy? Well, because we've had people now, Leah Thomas, much like I predicted, anybody who could have uh, who was in sport could have predicted that sooner or later we'll have enough guys. Uh, today we have three hundred and something like seventy one guys that are, we are known have been known to compete in female sport, winning and taking awards literally away from female athletes. And, and that's across like 57 sports globally. So basically it's well, well known enough now and it's starting to irk people. And so the politicians and everybody starts saying, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. That's making us look bad. And so now they're going to change, starting to change back. And I think in, in Canada, the province of Alberta, as far as women's sports goes, the province of Alberta is the first province to take that on. Yeah, and, and let's talk about that. So Alberta Premier Daniel Smith, announced uh, in the early start of 2024 that there'll be changes to the protection of women's sports. Why don't you unpack what some of those changes will be? So Daniel Smith is basically acknowledging that male bodies are different than female bodies and it's not beneficial to women and girls. She literally said this in her statement. It's not beneficial for women and girls to have males, even if they identify as trans, to enter female sports. It's disadvantages and puts uh, women and girls in, <clears throat> in danger at harm. And um, so what this means is there's going to be some sort of legislation by the fall that um, every, every school sport, call it, uh, club sport, whatever, is going to have to have a, at least one category that is female only. So sex-based guidelines. Um, irrespective of identity and you know we i would say this most women who are transgender who who most female born people who are trans or non-binary love to stay in women's sports for the most part mm -hmm. so when you think about it if there's a male who's trans and he comes into women's sports he's literally discriminating against the female born trans it's it's not <laughs> so it's not point. even about trans it's basically that guy's being transphobic because he's discriminating against another kind of trans person so we just need to have rational sex-based boundaries. So Alberta is the first province. Have, has anybody followed suit or is there any uh, inkling that another province will follow suit? And by the way, I have to say, I mean, I'm glad it was a female premier who said, hey, guys, let's wake up here. This does make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. Um, I predict more provinces will follow suit. They're going to wait and see what happens in Alberta. And they're going to find out that most people, despite the loud voices of the very extreme far left and a few activists, and of course the media gives them all of the attention, but other than a few voices, I think they'll see that it works and most people are happy with it. So is, is that really who the opposition is? Is it like a radicalized far left? Uh, yeah. Are scientists in opposition to this as well? No, it's, it's uh, gender studies activists and universities that are not based in science. It's, it's anything, any of those uh, departments and universities that end in the word studies, you know, social studies or women's studies, gender studies, they all come up with these crazy ideas and then they want to experiment socially on society. But if you actually look at the performance data and, and talk to the, the actual scientists who study human performance, there's no question what you should do. Wow. Wow. Um on April 8th, the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, NIA, announced that beginning August 1st, trans women will not be allowed to compete in women's competitions. So again, we see this trickling globally. Uh, this is an American college yeah. group. Uh, a victory, I think, no? Yeah. So that's the NAIA, which is National North American Interscholastic, like something like that. Yes. Um, and they have some Canadian schools in it. So that's fascinating because... I think UBC athletes 
participate there, Simon yes. Fraser, some of the BC, like some of the you know, um, uh, Canadian universities that live close to the border send their athletes over the border to the different U.S. universities. And so right away, we're going to get some Canadian uh, teams exposed to the new policy, which is great. Okay, excellent. We're going to pick this up in just a moment.